Today I'm creating an art journal page and I'm working in my Strathmore visual journal. To begin with I have gessoed the page and then I am adding two acrylic paints. Um, the first one is an Anita's brand paint in seafoam green and the second is a fresco finish paint by Paparazzi in the colour Bora Bora. Once the paint has dried, I'm stamping the background with a postcard stamp. This one, I don't know the manufacturer of, but I do know that Darkroom Door make a very similar, if not identical, um, background stamp um, if you were looking for something like this. And I'm stamping using Archival Ink and the colour is Cobalt Blue. Next I'm taking a Sizzix die, this is the Tag Scallop Combo which is quite an old die, I'm not entirely sure whether this one is still being made um, but I've cut the three different size tags out from it and I'm using a range of dabber in Sunshine Yellow to add colour to those. Here are the tags after the paint has dried and I've chosen an archive link in Monarch Orange and another stamp with text on it to add some interest to these. And now I'm using the same archive link in Monarch Orange with a piece of Ranger Cut and Dry to edge the tags. I'm now returning to the journal page and this is a journal alphabet stamp set by Creative Expressions which is a UK company and I'm stamping straight onto my journal page using Archival Black. Once the stamping is complete, I'm now taking the tags that I have painted and stamped and I'm arranging them onto the journal page um, where I'd like them. After I have all the tags arranged on the page where I'd like them, I decide to tear the bottom edge of the tags, um, not really for any particular reason other than this is an effect that I really like the look of and again I'm edging that um, torn edge with the archival link. And now I'm going to use Golden Matte Medium to adhere these tags to the page. This is a Pan Pastel in Phalo Blue Shade and I'm going to be using this with one of the Pan Pastel soft tools to go around each of the tags so that it adds some dimension and contrast.
Following the work I've done with the pan pastel, I need to use a fixative, so I'm using Spectrafix, which is non-toxic and safe to use indoors. Next, I'm taking Payne's Grey, which is a fluid acrylic by Golden, and I'm using this with a detail brush by Artmaster to paint around each of the tags. This is to deepen the colour and add further depth and dimension. This is a golden gesso and I'm going to use this to add a base coat to the text that I stamped earlier and the reason I want to do this is because I'm going to paint over the letters using a silks acrylic glaze and because it's a glaze it's obviously a translucent paint and I don't want any of the blue background to show through. This is the Silks Acrylic Glaze that I've chosen for painting the letters. The colour is Spiced Pumpkin and I've chosen this colour because it matches the archival ink that was used to stamp over the tags. Once the acrylic glaze has dried, I'm using a Posca paint pen in black to outline each of the letters. And if you ever wonder why I do this when it's been stamped with the black ink anyway, usually um, if I've painted them, I've possibly gone outside of the lines, so that could be a reason. But also, the ink does not stamp as black and as bold and as crisp as I would like it when you're stamping into a journal so I do like to have it as jet black as I can possibly make it so that it stands out. These are words that I've created to go onto the tags using my label maker and before I can use them on the page I want to add a coat of golden matte medium to them and this will provide a surface which can be painted on. When they come out of the labelling machine they have a glossy finish and that is not very conducive to accepting paint. Following the coat of matte medium I'm going to add a coat of a Paper Artsy Fresco Finish Paint. This colour is Beach Hut and I've chosen this because it's a translucent paint and therefore the text is not going to be obscured by it. Now I'm taking a piece of cheesecloth and I'm going to colour this with a tumble dye by SEI. This colour is orange and once it's dried it does dry a little bit lighter than I was expecting so I went ahead and also added some red to this off camera. Here you can see the colour that was achieved on the cheesecloth through mixing the orange and the red tumble dyes and now I'm just cutting it into small pieces so that they can be layered onto each of the tags. 
The next step is to attach the cheesecloth to the tags and for this I've chosen soft gel medium which is a little bit stronger than the matte medium that I've been using throughout. And now back to the printed words, the paint has dried on these, so I'm using cobalt blue archival ink and a piece of Ranger cut and dry foam to edge them. The next step is to arrange the words onto the tags where I'd like them, and these labels are self adhesive, so I'm going to use the self-adhesive strip to attach them to the tags and then I will reinforce it with some matte medium. Here I'm going back to the archival ink in cobalt blue and a piece of Ranger Cut and Dry foam and I'm using this to create a border for my page. This is a crafter's workshop stencil called Mini Tile Texture and I'm going to use this along with some Prima Light paste to create some additional texture on my page. When the Prima light paste has dried, it dries to a semi-opaque, dull white um, kind of finish. So I do want this to be a more brilliant white, so I'm adding some titanium white golden acrylic over the top of this. Hopefully here you can see the difference that the coat of titanium white has made and the contrast that it now provides against the background. To make the page appear more cohesive I wanted to also add some white to the letters so I'm going around the inside of those using a Posca paint pen. For the final step of the project, I'm taking some Silks Acrylic Glaze in Mediterranean Blue and I'm going over the text that was printed using my label maker that is on all of the tags and the reason I'm doing this is because without adding the um, glaze to an additional area, the stamped words were the only element that had any shimmer so I just felt it would be more complete and more cohesive if that shimmer appeared in another area of the page. So the colour is again quite translucent so you can still see the text fairly clearly. That concludes today's project. I hope you enjoyed watching. As usual there is a link in the video description to the full product list and there are also links to my social media sites. If you stay till the very end of the video, you'll see the close-up shots also.